Then to continue, then we reached page 101 of this Lebanese edition, page 79 of the Egyptian edition, which is now available again. That the author, Sheikh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul, Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah, he continued. وَكُلُّ مَا سِوَى اللَّهِ عَالَمٌ وَأَنَا وَاحِدٌ مِذَالٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعَالَمُ And everyone besides Allah is an alam and everything besides Allah is a created being and I am one of those created beings the point that everything besides Allah having just explained that Allah is the Rabb the Lord and Nurturer of the Alameen of every alam then Shaykh Islam mentions what this word alam which is in the plural being alameen being everything as he said everything besides Allah is alam and I am one of those one of that alam one of those created beings Shaykh Fawzan Allah, he said in explanation then the Shaykh Rahimahullah he explained the manner in which this ayah is used as an evidence. Obviously referring back to the ayah that came last week, second ayah of Surah Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The explanation that all praise is for Allah, the Lord of the whole of creation. So Shaykh al Fawzan says here, then the Shaykh Rahimahullah explain the manner in which this ayah is used as evidence. So he's saying, وَكُلُّ مَا سِوَى اللَّهِ عَالَمٌ And everything besides Allah is an alam, is a created being. And I am one of those created beings. I am an alam, I am one of those created beings. So therefore, Allah is my Lord. Allah is my Rabb. Because he is, because he said, because Allah is Rabbul Alameen. Allah is the Lord of all of the Alameen. Allah is the Lord of all of the created beings. And I am one of the Alameen. I am one of the created beings. So no one is able to say, I have a Rabb, I have a Lord. Besides the Lord of the Alameen, besides the Lord of creation, neither an unbeliever nor a Muslim. This is not. This will not be possible ever, and no person with intellect will say it. The Sheikh said, "This is a proof for the Rububiya. This is a proof for the Lordship of Allah, the Mighty and Majestic." And since he is the Rabbul Alameen, since he is the Lord of the whole of the creation, <laughs> then therefore he is the one deserving worship. Because he is the Lord of the whole of the creation, therefore he is the one deserving of ibadah, of worship. And this nullifies the worship of others besides him, he the perfect and most high. And therefore after after it he said, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Of the same surah, Surah Al Fatiha, the first surah, Ayah 5. With the explanation, you alone do we worship, and your aid alone do we seek. Then Shaykh Fawzan explains this, this crucial ayah from Surah Al Fatiha, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. And he explains the the wording. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. He said, <coughs> this indicates al hasr This indicates restriction. I mean the word the way that it, the it's worded, it indicates restriction. What the Shaykh is indicating here, meaning that, that that worship is restricted for Allah. Worship is only for Allah. That's the that's what's indicated by the form of the wording. Iyaka na'budu. 
you alone do we worship. So he said, this indicates restriction. And then he brings a grammar point, because the fact that the governed word, al-ma'mul, is brought forward, iyaka, and the governing verb is put back, na'budu, indicates restriction. Meaning that the word order has been tra- been changed from what would normally be used in the, in the speech of, of people. That normally it would be said in Arabic speech, na'buduka, we worship you. The verb would come first, and then the one who is mentioned as being worshipped would come after. But here the order has been reversed. Iyaka na'budu. With the explanation, you we worship. So the word, the normal order has been reversed here. So the Shaykh is making the point here. So this indicates al-hasr, indicates restriction. He said, so iyaka, you, na'budu, we worship, is different to na'buduka. It's different to just saying na'buduka, we worship you. Because saying na'budu, we worship, this is merely affirmation. I mean, if it were to be said, na'budu, um, na'buduka, we worship you. All that would mean was affirmation that we worship the one that we're mentioning that we worship. A mere affirmation. But it would not be a denial and a negation of the worship of others. So the Shaykh said, however, iyaka na'budu. However, the wording as it, as it occurs in the ayah, with the explanation, you we worship. This includes an nafi wal ithbad. This includes negation and affirmation, meaning la na'budu ghayrak. We do not worship anyone else beside you. And when the word, when the, the phrase is put by this, iyaka na'budu, and it means you alone we worship. We worship you, an affirmation of the worship of Allah, and negation of worship of anything besides Him. That's understood from the form of the wording. The word order has changed from what's normally found in the language. So this indicates something. The Shaykh is saying it indicates al hasr restriction of worship, the affirmation of worship for Allah, and a negation of worship for anything besides Him. He said, and ibadah and worship will not be correct except with an nafi wa ithbat, except with negation and affirmation. In the worship of a Muslim will not be correct if it's just affirmation of worship without negation of the worship of that which is false along with it. So he said, worship will not be correct except with negation and affirmation. And it is the meaning of la ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah. For it is, or for it contains negation and affirmation. <coughs> A negation of the right to be worshipped from everything besides Allah. An affirmation of it for Allah, the mighty and majestic. So the Shaykh is saying in both, in the ayah, iyaka na'budu. Contains both negation of the right to worship for everything besides Allah. An affirmation of the right to worship for Allah alone. The same as in the shahada, la ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah. A negation of worship and the right to worship for everything besides Allah, an affirmation of that right for Allah alone. Likewise. 